Floss Tube, it's Jen, Felicity Stitches, and I'm back finally with a new video. I've got a lot to talk about and I'm going to try very hard to do it in a short amount of time. So, life updates. I'm out of orientation, I'm officially, officially on my own, and it's going great so far. I love it and super happy. My oldest is done with kindergarten, can't even believe that, moving on to first grade next year. So we have a lot to do this summer to try and make the most of our time off, and uh, we're going to do our best with that. And then um, the last thing is I got back from the New Jersey floss tube retreat, which was amazing. And a lot of people have done videos about it, shown the swag, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to talk in a little different tilt about it just because I don't want to rehash what everybody else has talked about and sometimes it's nice to get different perspectives. So those are life updates, short, sweet, to the point. Uh, finishes. I made a small for the New Jersey Smalls Exchange. It was supposed to be spring themed and I will insert a picture here. I stuffed this with uh, lavender scented crushed walnut shells so it had a really nice weight to it. I made, I lined it in uh, one of Vanna's most recent videos on making, uh, I think, pillows. She talks about how she's added lining and that that has made her finishes next level, which I love, and it worked really well. I was worried about the shells like peeking out and poking people, which they're not going to do. They are they almost appear to be tumbled, so that's not an issue, but um, it really did give it a very nice finish to it. And I'll link Vanna's video below. And another finish was, oh, it was a freebie by, um, I showed it before in my other video, a freebie by um, the work basket entitled Pink Flower and they have another freebie sort of matching entitled Blue Flower. Another finish that I did is a uh, teacher gift, end of the year teacher gift for my daughter's kindergarten teacher. She was amazing and I loved her, my daughter loved her, just, just the best experience you could possibly hope for for your little one to start in school. This teacher really made a difference in my daughter's education, really gave her some much needed structure and equipped her with the knowledge that she needs to move forward and do better. And so I wanted to thank her in a very special way. So I'll insert the finish here. This was actually a uh, conversion rechart that I did of this la -di da pattern called Give Thanks. And what I did was I kept the alphabet grid, which I loved, and I kept the numbers, which I loved, and the border. And then, um, even though I really, I mean, I think this is very sweet, and I love that it says thanks here, I got rid of this and inserted... Uh, that quote that I had found online and I really think that it was a nice gift. She really liked it. I framed it and uh, we gave it to her a couple of days before the last day of school just to give her so that she could have it special and not because you know the last day of school everybody's bringing their gifts and I want my gift to be special so mix it up a little bit, give it to her like two days before the end of school. Other finishes that I've been working on, not stitching related but not uh, actual cross stitch are project bags, which I did not think I was going to get on the project bag train. I received a project bag from uh, Michelle, I got actually got two, um, from Farm Girl Stitcher and I love them. Oh there it is, it's like way across the room. It's got a window in it so you can see what's in the bag. And she mentions in the video where she actually gave away the bags that I got. 
uh, where she sort of learned how to do this. And I went and did my own online search and found uh, people who were making project bags and doing a tutorial. And if you do want to learn how to make these bags, there are some excellent tutorials and I will direct you to them. There's links below. I went to Making Life Count and she has a great video and I just followed it. I watched it a couple of times. I wrote things down and then I found some other stitchers who were doing tutorials and sort of fine-tuned that because the Making Life Count one is not as precise, but it's very good. Uh, Calico makes a great one. Lisa Kindred Stitcher has a great bag that she makes. It doesn't have a window, but she does this thing. She puts it all together. She sews it all together, and then she flips it around, and it's amazing. It's the coolest thing. And then uh, the Primitive Stitcher also has a great bag tutorial, so any four of those will be great. If you really want the windowed bag with the um, with the clear window in it, I think Making Life Count is a great place to start. And she references where she got her tutorial from, and I don't remember the name of it, but that's what I would recommend. So uh, here's just a couple of bags that I made. I made some gift bags for people at the retreat that I was going to see um, just because I wanted to thank them. Like Letitia, she's one of the first people when I started making Floss 2 videos that reached out to me and um, she sent me those needle minders that Abby Bella Stitch had made that she had extras of and it was just so kind and so sweet and I just wanted to make her something to say thank you. So I made her a bag and I made Arlene and McKenna bags as a thank you for going through all the trouble of having the retreat for us because it was a big deal. And then a couple of people that I am uh, just really close with and love made uh, some bags for them that we have matching because we all love to stitch chatelaines and I thought this looked like the center of a chatel like a chatelaine medallion uh, and it's just I mean it's just quilt fabric that I found at Joann's and it's a little busy but what else and then we uh, the inside is this I don't know if you can see it sort of this swimmy purple and it's got like because purple's my favorite color it's got uh, silver in there it just reminded me a lot of a chatelaine and then of course chatelaines have lots of bling so I added a little blingy charm so that's one I made I made actually three of these so now you'll know why I don't have I, I feel like I was really productive but not necessarily a lot to show for it and then I made this bag which was inspired by the bag that um, Farm Girl Stitcher sent to me and it's got this fun interior and then I added this uh, fleur-de-lis charm on the end of it and it's holding my uh, Brenda Gervais Birds of a Feather it's uh, with thy needle it was a mystery um, stitch along and they're very very hard if not impossible to find and I saw this at my LNS the crafty U, and I was like I have to have that and the owner was like well I have one full set left and there's none available in the universe to get after that so I grabbed the full set and then I went on a hunt for a set for Farm Girl Stitcher because she and I are freaks about Brenda Gervais <laughs> and I knew that she would want this and she had never I sent it to her and I was like have you ever seen have you do you have this and she was like no it's beautiful so believe it or not I called all over the planet I looked all over the internet and I found a full set at her local LNS can you believe that local I mean it's Minnesota it's I think it's almost an hour drive for her but um, unbelievable so I called there ordered it had it sent to her and so we could stitch it together and now we're also stitching with Michelle Cozy Egg who had started it a little earlier Lori Mischievous Stitchers who I got to meet at the retreat and I just love her so much I just love you Lori you are amazing and I continue 
to look for that skinny button at the bottom of my glass, but I have not found it yet. And I am trying every different glass and mug that I can get my hands on. So, and there's a bunch of other people, I can't remember all, all, all the names right now, but... So we're all doing a stitch along. So if you have this, birds of a feather... Let me pull it out. I haven't, I actually haven't started it yet. I'm going to start it this month. Uh, it's my birthday month. So, um, I'm going to start it this month. Actually, maybe today. And that's what it looks like. I just think it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. And I'm going to stitch it on the called for fabric, which is Weeks Dye Works, Confederate Gray. Ah, uh, just stunning, stunning, stunning. So, and, oh. Let's do the comb through. These are all the threads. They're all Weeks Dye Works threads. I mean, aren't those colors beautiful? Just beautiful. So I'm really excited to start it uh, and stitch along with everybody. And that's that. So. That's another project bag. And then if you had seen McKenna's most recent video, which I love. I, I mean, I enjoy the live videos and stuff like that, but I just love it when she sits down and talks with us. Uh, I made myself, when I saw this fabric, I knew it was a must-have. And I immediately thought of McKenna because it's so shiny and it's slinky and kind of sexy. And I thought... McKenna needs a project bag made out of this. And then I also thought, you know what? So do I. So I made one for myself. And I don't know if you can see it. It is slinky fabric. And if I get really close up on there, those are X's. It's printed on there in metallic. metallic whatnot but they're meant it's meant to look like cross stitch I just don't know if there's ever been a more perfect fabric ever printed in the world quite frankly so I made one for her I made one for me and I love it and it's a navy background it's really just so pretty and then um, she got a blingy pull tag with rhinestones on it. I got one that's like, it looks sort of blingy, but it's mostly just, it's just a cheap little pull I got from Joann's. And then sparkly fabric, that's a like a hot pink fuchsia magenta inner fabric. Okay, 15 minutes down, let's see. Okay, so project bags. Making Life Count, that was the main one, Calico, Kindred Stitcher, and Primitive Stitcher. All three have great, excellent project bag tutorials. And they're not perfect, but they're mine. And then, um, that'll be that. Okay, so, oh, speaking of project bags, let me show you this last one. This was a gift that I got from It Is Kismet Stitches, and I put my new start from the retreat in this bag and so it's been a constant companion by my side and I love it and uh, it's super soft and beautiful and lovely and there you go okay project bags good done new whips and new starts so there's been no whip work whip work is that a thing there's been no whip work because I've been working on the teacher gift and the finish for the small that's a lot of work finishing things is kind of a lot of work. I can see why McKenna like bangs it out immediately. Finish what you're working on, finish it, finish it, and then move on to the next thing. I totally, I get that for sure now. Um, and then the project bags. So that just really took up all my time. But I did have a bunch of new starts. The teacher gift actually was a new start. And I started Sarah Brazier by Hands Across the Sea. And I'll insert some pictures here. It's a very modest start. She is a big, big, big girl. Those are 80 centimeter scroll rods. 
I sort of feel a little bit like I've lost my mind because I've, I'm starting all of these big pro. I have started all of, I mean, I thought Smith Sampler was a big project and Sarah makes Smith Sampler look like, you know, a quick stitch, a little small. <laughs> and Smith Sampler is definitely not a small. So I've got a couple more big starts, I think, that I need to sort of get out of my system. I need to get them started. And then basically I'm just going to chug along on all my big girls and pepper in some smalls and some, some modest sized projects in between. Another big start that I started at the retreat was uh, Hoity Toity by Long Dog Samplers. I love Long Dog Sampler samplers. They are amazing and I think I've mentioned that uh, I think I've mentioned before that I love her samplers but um, Hoity Toity really really speaks to me and there were a couple of girls, women, ladies, that were stitching it. Uh, Lisa Kindred Stitcher was stitching it at the retreat, and Crafty Kim, hi Kim, was stitching it, and I mean, it was just amazing. And when it jumps out at you, you know that you have to stitch it, and that's exactly what happened. But it's a big sampler. It's 197 by 282. And so I wanted to do something that felt a little bit more manageable for me. So I got the bright idea. It was like, well, you know, I really like stitching on 40 count and 46 count, but over two can be a little taxing on the eyeballs and you need, you know, magnification and light and blah, blah, blah. And we'll get into that a little bit more. But... I came up with this idea and I shared it with McKenna and she's actually going to do it on one of her samplers. Stitch one over one on 22 count Hardanger and whoop, you get like the best of both worlds. So this is like, look at all these threads, it's kind of a hot mess, but what you're getting when you do that is you're getting that high count, right? You're getting the benefit of, I mean, I'm getting good coverage. I'm using one strand of thread. I don't know if you can see the hard anger. So when you stitch, oop, coming back, coming back. Hey, Emily. So when you stitch on linen, right, it's individual threads that are woven like this, right? When you stitch on Hardanger, it's two threads that are woven like this. And when you stitch on Ada, it blows up exponentially into something else. So I can't do it with my fingers. That's why I'm not even going to try. Um, so this is you get the benefit of being able to see the holes clearly because I know I'm only doing cross stitch. I'm not doing any fractionals. Uh, so I can see the holes clearly like you would on Ada, right? But it's super tiny and it looks from a distance, looks like even weave. So I'm, I'm thrilled with how this looks and hoity toity is, I mean, it's damn near full coverage. Now I may take this bottom part out and move these these humpty humps up to these humpty humps and call it a day. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Those are some big bowls of fruit, you know what I'm saying? So we'll see. But I abs I mean I love these birds. I love this bowl. I love this fox. The cardinals. Oh, I'm an Ohio girl, man. I love my cardinals. So it's a really beautiful sampler, and I am using uh, DMC. I'm using DMC. Run DMC. And it is gorgeous. In fact, I didn't even realize it, call, it, it calls for, you can do DMC or General Arts. And I didn't even realize you could do General, general Arts, or I probably would have, you know, I probably would have jumped on that. But Lisa, both Lisa and Kim are stitching with the DMC and it is gorgeous. 
And then Anchor Black. This is an Anchor Black that McKenna gave me because they didn't have any at Needleworkers Delight. They were out. So, uh, McKenna, I have purchased another Anchor Black for you and uh, we'll be giving it to you at StitchCon. Yes, I'm going to StitchCon. I'm really excited, even though it's last minute, the family's coming with. We're gonna do, you know, Cincinnati Zoo and fun stuff like that, and I'm gonna stitch. Amazing. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do Retreat Talk. And then I'm going to do haul sort of all together. So first thing I want to do with the retreat is to just say a huge, huge thank you to Arlene and McKenna for going through the trouble to put on such an amazing event. It was wonderful. I'd never been to a retreat. I didn't know what to expect. I had a great time. It was really neat to be able to go to another needlework store and see what that is like. Needleworkers Delight is a really great LNS. I'd never been to a place that had bolts of fabric. It's a little overwhelming, uh, but it's wonderful. And they feed their people night and day. Every time I came in, there's like a full service of tea and coffee, and sometimes there was lasagna, and there was cookies, and there was always, you always felt welcome to come in and stay. There's a big giant like a dining room table in there where everybody just sits around and you know chews the fat and does their stitching and there's comfy places to sit and it's just a really really lovely shop um, and I really enjoyed my time there I got some beautiful fabrics which I'll show you in a little bit uh, other people I need to thank Needleworkers Delight, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us into your shop. Thank you for the discount. Thank you for making us feel so welcome. Thank you for working so hard to keep us happy. And thank you for the bag. I love the bag. Uh, it's a great little retreat bag. Uh, Krynik Threads, thank you for the number four braid and the color card. Weeks Dye Works, thank you for the package of floss and pearl cotton. I'm looking forward to using those. I'm a fan of Weeks Dye Works threads. Karen Collection, thank you for the watercolors threads and the three free pattern. Rainbow Gallery, thank you for the card of thread. Uh, I love Rainbow Gallery threads. I'm actually using Rainbow Gallery thread conversion that I came up with my LNS owner for uh, Sarah Brazier. And um, I'm really excited so far. I'm loving working with Rainbow Gallery silks, uh, Splendor silks. And Gentle Arts Thread had also donated some raffle prizes and they were beautiful and I love Gentle Arts Threads. I'm not, I'm a thread snob in that I like fancy sno snob. I like fancy threads, but I like all fancy threads. I'm an equal opportunity fancy thread user, so, or fancy floss user, so um, I appreciate I appreciate all of that uh, from all of you. It was it was really neat to get a special bag of goodies. Okay, packing. Oh my lord! I never would have thought that the packing thing would have become such a big deal, but it really was a big deal. So here's what I discovered: packing. So here's what, I'm not going to make a whole new packing video, but here's what I will say. I packed to look cute. I was raised to look cute. My mama raised me to be the kind of person that put effort into her appearance wherever she went. And you can do that, but you can also be really comfortable. And I thought I was going to be really comfortable, but one of the things that I underestimated was the hotel was super, super cold. So my clothes, although appropriate for the time of year, were not appropriate for the frozen tundra that was the hotel. So even though I said pack in layers, and I did think I packed in layers, it wasn't enough layers. Also, shoes. Flats are super cute, but they are not, you really, honestly, I know it's not a sport, cross stitch is not a sport, but tennis shoes are the most appropriate thing. For whatever reason, they are just, they're the most comfortable thing to wear. So I have purchased myself a pair of cross-stitching tennis shoes, retreat shoes, 
And that's those are my comfy, cozy shoes, and I wear them when I'm cross-stitching because a girl needs a pair of comfortable shoes. That plane ride made my ankle swell up like nobody's business, and there was no amount of water pills, no amount of walking, no amount of flushing out of my system that was gonna get those ankles to go down. I tried to put my feet up, everything I could think of still didn't work. Uh, so wear warm clothes. I ended up going to Old Navy at a mall that was close by. Thank you, Angie and Kristen. And I found, and I found like two pairs of sweatpants, a big old sweatshirt, a pair of comfortable shoes, and a couple of pairs of socks, and I was in heaven for the rest of the retreat. And you will probably see video of me. I'm wearing a big old red and white sweatshirt, and that's now my cross-stitch sweatshirt. So uh, dress, dress like it's a sport because we're doing it for long periods of time and make sure that you're super comfortable. And honestly, you don't need that many clothes because you're really not changing your clothes that much and you're not doing very much. Uh, you can change your clothes to go out if you want to, I suppose, but comfortable, 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 wear what is comfortable. If you are most comfortable wearing jeans, then you wear jeans. If you are most comfortable wearing sweatpants, then you wear sweatpants. And don't worry about what you're going to look like, because I'll tell you what, you walk into a room full of 80 strangers, and by the end of the week, you are ugly crying your way through the room, trying to hug, making your Uber driver wait, because everybody is your best friend all of a sudden. So, uh, comfort. Comfort, comfort, comfort. Traveling sucks. Traveling is exhausting. I'm not a fan of traveling. It's stress provoking. I didn't have any problems going through TSA with my bag except they wanted to look at the base of my light. There must be something in there that they couldn't see through and they wanted to look at my adapter for my Needlework System 4 frame which is just a little 7 16 a long thing that I use by hand to uh, adjust my Needlework System 4 which I brought and it took up all the room on the table, so I had like no personal real estate on the table, and that felt a little crowded to me. So, here's my fixes. I bought a pair of those Yocto Sun. I don't know if you've been seeing everybody wearing these or not. These are new. I didn't know them when I made my magnification and lighting video, but they're called Yocto Sun, and they're several different names anyways but they look like this okay they're a lighted magnifier here they come like this they come with uh, one two three four five five different lenses in this beautiful hard case everywhere from one times magnification to uh, 3.5 times magnification they feel like glass, I, but I can't tell you for sure that they are. And it is only two LED lights, but they are directly focused on your work when you wear them. And so uh, they are very, very uh, intense. And I don't even have to wear my glasses with them. I'm going to put them on for you because why the hell not? They are adjustable here, here. And then this thing slides in and out. And then this light moves up and down here. And I'm going to turn the light on so that you can see. I mean, that is some bright shiznit right there. Can you see in there that little slider goes up and down so you can adjust the distance away from your head. And then three AAA batteries go in here. And those, uh, my husband is going to buy me some... Uh, rechargeables and that way I'll never have to buy batteries for it again and then these things come off and you can actually put a head like a band around to fasten and then there are uh, rubber pads here that keep things from slipping this keeps things from slipping that's a rubber pad they're just really wonderful and like I said this light here literally you adjust it so that it wherever you're you have your work, it's directly focused on your work. So if you have these that are $15 on Amazon, you don't need to bring anything else. You don't need to bring a light, you don't need to bring a, a stand or a clip light or anything like that. All you need are those. 
they're light, they're portable, they're wonderful. I'm a huge fan. Uh, Letitia is the person that I saw wearing them, and then it just sort of blew up from there. So thank you, Letitia, for posting a ridiculous picture of yourself like that on Instagram and Facebook because those things are a lifesaver, and I love them. Uh, what else? So hoity-toity was some something that I bought at Needleworkers Delight. Another thing I got was this free gift from, free gift, uh, a, a gift of some silk from Ingeborg in a color that I absolutely adore and I'm going to have to work it into something very, very special. Um, but it's beautiful and I just appreciate the fact that she thought to bring stuff like that for us. It was very sweet. Um, another I'm trying to go fast because I promised people I would do things in a half an hour and I've got literally 10 minutes left. Um, okay, so this is a uh, a book that I got at, we do silent auctions at our needlework, our sampler guild meetings and this is one that I got. It's a Blackbird Designs book. It's called A Fine Collection and it's, what year is this from? It's a sweet book. 2002. And it goes by uh, a fine collection. It goes by month. And it just has a lot of beautiful um, beautiful pieces. And when I saw it, I thought, you know what? I gotta have it. So, one, there's one. Really, really pretty pieces. I'm sorry, I'm going really fast. This is why people go so fast. This is what drives everybody crazy. There's another. So, a fine collection, Blackbird Designs, circa 20, 2002. Uh, what else? Fabric, 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 and another sampler. I bought this uh, summer. It's from Summerhouse Stitchworks. Sarah Jane Grant, 1845, deconstructed, and this is the original sampler. And this is. It's got some great instructions. This is the. I love it. It's a little small, right? and then that pretty bird and then this is actually stitched on a darning mushroom and I was fortunate enough to be at a stitch in at my LNS last night and my owner has the darning mushroom kit so I got that because now I'm all into like finishing smalls like you're supposed to so that was exciting okay fabrics that I got at Needleworkers Delight very exciting stuff 40 count Verdal in hazelnut. Beautiful, very soft. It's a linen, but it looks like an even weave. Uh, 40 count silk gauze. This is this is insane in the membrane right here. I don't even know if you can see it. Can you see it? It's actually not hard to see, but whatever you stitch on it, you're, I think you're supposed to stitch full coverage, and I haven't figured out what that's going to be yet. 46 count raw Bergen linen from Zweigart. Every time I hear Bergen, I think of Trolls movie. Big old slub. It's very pretty. Uh, another 46 count Bergen linen in... Parisian taupe. Perfect for samplers. Here's a 46 count solo dye Bergen linen that I saw and I was like, oh boy, that's mine. Look at how pretty. I mean, it's gorgeous. It looks like a sunset at dusk. It's just gorgeous. And then another, oh, this is a Here's the fun ones. 
I got a 55 count Kingston linen in cream. I'm sure you cannot see that. Fifty five count. And then I'm just going to hold it up here so we don't have to go back and forth. I got a fifty six count in raw linen. Can you see that? I mean, it is itty bitty. So I'm hoping those Yacto Sun spectacles will work well for me because I'm really excited about it and I have no idea what I'm going to stitch on it but now I have it and I'll be ready to stitch on it when the project calls and then the only other thing that I got sorry about the crinkling fabric that I was so excited to get and it's totally inappropriate to to wear at this point in time but it is a scarf from Glen Prince of Great Britain and it is a red sampler scarf in this beautiful, it's 100% wool, but it's a really sheer, gauzy wool, and it's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous, and I'm so, so, so happy that I spent the money and purchased it because it was definitely invest an investment, but it'll be something that I have and that I wear. Glen Prince uh, forever. Apply thine heart unto instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Just beautiful, right? So that's my scarf that I, I have to make myself wear, but I won't want to wear it because I won't want anything to happen to it. Uh, okay, so things that I'm loving right now. I told you about the Yocto Sun magnifiers. Uh, when I was watching the tutorials for Project Bags, I think it was Primitive Stitcher or Calico. One of them was using this little iron, Steam Fast. It's awesome little iron. And it's perfect for stitching. It literally, first of all, it comes in this little comes in this little bag. It is it can be uh, steam. It fits in the palm of your hand, people. Do you see that? Okay, guys, really quick. I ran out of um room on my on my good camera because I've got something else on there that I need to put together that I'm also going to be posting a separate video but <clears throat> things I'm loving I told you about the Yocto Sun magnifier I told you about the tiny iron which you can get on Amazon both of those uh, I got so my daughter's art teacher posts their art that they make at school online through a website called Artsonia. And you can take, it's all a scam, right? It's all about making money. But you can take their artwork and you can turn it into things. And I was given this for Mother's Day. It's, I'm, I'm filming on my phone, so I'm sorry if it doesn't look very good. And it's one of those things where you can change out change out the the thing and it's a magnet and I thought that's basically like a stitch dot so I got quite a few of my daughter's amazing artwork and I have been using them like doesn't that look like a Monet like a water lilies I love it um, I've got one for, I've got seasonal ones. Um, that's a heart. My little budding artist. It's 
like the moon and the sun, sort of yin and yang. That's probably one of my favorites. And back to the pink snowman. So um, those were, I got like three or four of them. I had actually purchased some for my mother-in-law and gave those to her for Mother's Day. So it was interesting that we were on the same page there. So this was a Mother's Day gift and it's the gift that keeps on giving because I can use it in my stitching. And then the other thing that I love is, so have you guys heard of thread drops? They're, I've never actually seen them, but I know a lot of people who use them and they're lovely. They have sort of a sleek, minimalist design and they're teardrop shaped and they have a hole and then a larger hole at the bottom and you put your thread through it and uh, they're good for organizing for projects and they look great. Well, I went online to buy some thread drops and I found them, I found the cost to be a little exorbitant between, I mean, you'd have to order a lot of them for, it was like $8 for 30. They're made out of very, very heavy, durable grade cardboard, like cardstock from what I understand. Uh, so it was $8 for 30 and then another $8 for shipping. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't justify it. So I decided I was going to make my own thread drops. So what I did was I went to Michael's actually when they had a sale and I bought these tags uh, by Recollections and there were 25 tags and I believe it was $2.49 for the tags. And then I bought this little hole punch also by Recollections and I'm punching holes in them and I'm making my own homemade thread drops and I kind of love them so here's what they look like and then what I'm doing because these are inexpensive is I'm actually these are this is my set believe it or not this is DMC thank you very much uh, I am putting the number, this is actually anchor though, it's not 310, and the symbol that's on the chart so that I don't have to carry around the symbol key with me all the time. And I just put it on there and I figure when I'm done with it, I can either put a sticker over it and reuse it or I can use, like do it in a different marker and put it on the back. Uh, but that's what I'm doing and so far it's working out beautifully I love having the symbol already on uh, already on the card it makes it very simple for me I love that it looks uniform I love that all of my DMC's I can pet them just like I pet all my other threads and so that is something that I'm loving so you can do that too and this, I think this was like, truthfully, I don't remember how much it was, but it couldn't have been more than $14. And I got it for 40% off. So there you go. Plans. I plan to start Birds of a Feather today. I'm going to go back to Parchment Tapestry, my Rosewood Manor, my big piece, because I miss it. And someone was working on a Rosewood Manor piece yesterday at... The stitch in at the U and it just made me long to work on mine so I'm gonna do that and I've got to work on a small for this fall I've got to figure out what I'm gonna do for Midwest cross stitch retreat and I'm going to stitch con and those are my those are my big things so those are my big plans and to pack better which means to pack more comfortably um, until then, I hope that everything that you stitch with your hands shows your heart, and I hope that you have a wonderful week or month or summer. Who knows when will be the next time I see you, but I'm going to try very hard to make more videos, but they'll probably only be, I want to keep them around a half an hour in length, because that's about all the time I want to take away from my family, and I'm going to stop editing as much as I edit, because again, it's like a whole day away from my family, and I really... I don't want to do that. I don't want to take time away from them 
to do this. While this is important to me, it's not the most important thing to me. They are the most important thing to me. So uh, I love you guys very much. And I will talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye.